Good morning. Welcome to today's Sunday School lesson. We thank God for each and every one that's tuned in, and we pray that today's lesson will be a blessing to each and every one. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this lesson. And Lord, may we take you at your word that we may re remain steadfast in our faith and do and say the things that are pleasing in your sight. Yes. We want to please you. That is our goal. And we thank you for your grace. And we thank you for your mercy. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 The title of our lesson today is A Persevering Faith. A Continuing in Our Faith Despite Whatever Life Throws at Us Through Our Challenges, Obstacles, and Troubles. A Persevering Faith. Okay. Our lip. Lesson scriptures today is coming from Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 36. Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 36. And our key verse today is Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hebrews 10 and 23. Now, Aim for Change says that by the end of this lesson, we will explore the stories of early believers who suffered for the sake of their faith Long for the courage to endure suffering as a result of our faithful witness and share in the suffering of Christians around the world. And how can we share in the suffering of Christians around the world? We can simply pray. Amen. And that'll engage us in their suffering because the prayers of a righteous man or woman availeth much. Amen. All right, we'll begin with our story today. Anthony and Sharita had dated for one year and been friends for eight. They had had their ups and downs in their relationship. Some bad decisions from Sharita's past kept coming back to bite her, it seemed. But with prayer and heartfelt changes, they would work through the troubles as they came. One Saturday, Anthony met with Mr. Williams, Sharita's father. Anthony said to him, may I have your permission to ask Sharita to marry me? I love and respect your daughter and want to make her my partner for life. She is my blessing from God. Mr. Williams thought for a moment and smiled. You have my permission, Anthony, he said. Let's pray for you and Sharita's life together. One evening as Anthony and Sharita walked through the park, Anthony knelt on one knee and proposed. Sharita was speechless. As tears ran down her cheeks, she said, I have, had, I have made too many mistakes in my life. You can't truly love me because I have not forgiven myself. I don't deserve a life with you. I love you, but I can't marry you. As Sharita started to leave, Anthony said, We all make mistakes, but God forgives us when we sincerely come to him. I know you have a sincere heart. Otherwise, we wouldn't have made it this, this far. We can't let another little struggle stop us from the beautiful relationship we've been working toward. So through Amen. faith in Christ, our sins are forgiven and we have a new life. In today's lesson, we can develop a personal relationship with Jesus by faith and entering into the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Alrighty. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and read our, our background. Sacrifices were practiced from the earliest of times in the Old Testament. Animals were imperfect sacrifices that could not completely purify or atone for people's sins. The writer of Hebrews expresses the importance and superiority of Christ's priesthood to the Levitical priesthood. The Levitical high priest could only enter the Holy of Holies one day a year when he would make reconciling sacrifices for the sins of the entire nation. This was the only way the Jews knew to approach God. The writer of Hebrews explained a new covenant promise was placed into effect when Christ died. Back in Hebrews 9, 11, verses 11 through 12 and 24 through 28. The new covenant frees believers from the bondage of the first covenant. God took away the Levitical sacrificial system, which was the first arrangement when he established the perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ. 
The hope of enjoying the presence of God, of approaching him freely in an intimate relationship, is the hope referred to in our first verse today. The new covenant is the promise we can trust God to keep. Yeah. In the first nine chapters of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews is speaking a word of encouragement and warning to a Jewish audience who had believed, received, and accepted Christ and are being persecuted and even killed for their profession of faith in Christ. And it's a word of encouragement and warning for us in our faith walk as well. So we have four outlines today. Four outlines. Um, our profession of faith, Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 25. Knowledge of the truth, verses 26 and 27. How God will judge his people, in verses 28 through 31. And lastly, looking forward through suffering, in verses 32 through 36. Okay. So our first outline, our profession of faith in Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 25. The writer encourages believers to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. God reveals his promises and truths through his word. Thus, we must embrace God's word and resist temptation and opposition. He wants to reassure the believers by calling them to remember that God is faithful, that promise. God will do what he has promised. That's all there in mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 23. The writer also instructs the believers to consider each other. Believers must provoke or stir up the qualities of love and good works toward each other. The writer knew believers could have an impact on one another by loving and doing good deeds for each other. Because of the fear of persecution, some of the believers had stopped attending worship services. Therefore, the writer encourages the believers to pull together, to stir up loving and active faith. The fellowship of believers is a source of encouragement. It is an opportunity to share faith and grow stronger. So Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 25. 23 through 25. Says, let us hold faith to the profession. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching, as we see the day of Christ approaching. So the writer is encouraging us to hold fast or, or continue to hold fast mm -hmm. to what we believe to what we confessed hope in and that hope is in Christ death, burial, and resurrection in which he atoned for us he died in our place and put us in the right relationship with God and God is faithful in that he has promised us freedom from the penalty of sin and life everlasting and God will do exactly what he said he yes, will he do will. Yes, he will. we should come together with fellow believers and encourage each other to live a life of love and to do the work that God has called and chosen us into. We should assemble together in prayer, study, and worship and strongly encourage one another to live for Christ because he died for us. And the day of his return is soon approaching. Proverbs 27 and 17 says that as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We shouldn't hold back on giving each other tough love that will help us to move that will help move a person forward so we have to tell each other the truth mm -hmm. the whole truth and nothing but the truth mm -hmm. as iron sharpens iron so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend okay and so over there in verse 23 it's just reminding us that, that in light of what jesus did we need to hold fast to the truth because discouragement made them waver from the truth in verse 24 here, in light of what Jesus did, it reminds us to pursue the community of God's people. So discouragement made them avoid community at the very time they needed it most. And, you know, it makes me think of the pandemic. You know how so many people, I mean, we've gone back into the churches now and so many people still, you know, have walked away. 
But forsaking fellowship is a sure way to give place to discouragement. Our motivation for fellowship must be to obey God and give to others. We can and should gather with believers to encourage someone who needs to stand strong against the tide of discouragement. Mm. This pandemic is discouraging. So we gather, though, to receive something from God. We gather to give something to God. We gather to encourage each other by our shared faith and values. We gather together to bless one another. We gather together to work together. Mm. Do not forsake the feeling of yourself together. Let's have some church. Mm -hmm. And not just on Sunday, but every day. Amen. Okay, we're going to move on to our second outline. Knowledge of the truth, which is verses 26 and 27. And here the writer of Hebrews reminds the believers that if they sin willfully, they deliberately reject Christ. It is a conscious rejection of God after receiving the truth and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, rather than an occasional act of sin. Believers should not willfully rebel against God's provisions after receiving and fully understanding the knowledge of the truth, which is Christ's offer of salvation. The consequences of rejecting God are judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries, and there is no hope of forgiveness. Thus, those who reject Christ and disobey God are his adversaries. There is one certain judgment, death and destruction for obstinate apostates. The apostates will experience the wrath of God because there is no other help for sinners who reject their only remedy, salvation through accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm, not a good thing to call down the wrath of God on yourselves. Mm -hmm. 26 through 27. 26 through 27. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery, fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Calling down the wrath of God for no good reason. So, after we come into the knowledge of Christ and sin willfully or intentionally, we deliberately reject Christ. It's a rejection of God after receiving the truth and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And it makes the power of the blood shed on Calvary's cross ineffective in a person's life. 1 John 1, 6-7 says, if we, have, if we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness and that's to continue in sin, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And there's that assembling together again. Mm -hmm. Fellowship with one right. another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses from all sin. So since we have been forewarned, we should be on our guard, our guard that we will not lose our way and fall from a secure standing, which is in Christ, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. When we turn our backs on God, we become his enemy. And Hebrews 2 and 2 tells us that every sin will receive just punishment. Every sin will receive just punishment. So true. Because that's basically what those um, verses 26 through 31 is the danger of a willful rejection of jesus's perfect sacrifice mm -hmm. for us but think about it if jesus's sacrifice for sin is rejected there remains no other sacrifice that can cleanse mm -hmm. okay moving on to our third outline how god will judge his people in verses 28 through 31 so the Old Testament refers to the sin of idolatry that requires two witnesses or three witnesses to be put to death. Back over in Deuteronomy 17 and 6. The judgment for idolatry was death by stoning. But there is a worse punishment for someone who rejects the word of Christ. If someone considers the blood of the covenant an, old, an unholy thing, the person grieves the spirit of grace, which is the Holy Spirit. The person that rejects the spirit of God will receive a punishment greater than physical death. Wow. Judgment belongs to God, for the Lord shall judge his people. There is no other sacrifice for sin except Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. 
There is no other sacrifice for sin except Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Whoever rejects God's mercy will receive God's judgment. The apostate will experience an eternal punishment from God's own hands. However, believers who have received the mercy of God through Christ are saved and there is nothing to fear. Amen. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So we're reading verses 28 through 31. 28 through 31. 28 through 31. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden under the foot of God, who hath trodden under underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belong unto me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Mm -hmm. All right, 28 through 31. And the writer is helping us to understand that under the Mosaic law, those that trample or thumb the noses at the law of Moses were put to death at the word of two or three witnesses. So how much more will God punish someone who rejects the word of Christ or the spirit of God or turns away from the faith, which is apostasy? Isaiah 59 and 18 says, according to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay Fury to his adversaries, his enemies. Repayment to his enemies. Judgment belongs to God, and there is no other sacrifice for sin except Christ's sacrifice on the cross. As a man soweth, so shall he reap. All right. So now we are going to move to our last outline, looking forward through suffering in verses 32 through 36. 32 through 36. But we'll call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Partly with you were made a gain stock by both reproaches and afflictions. You put on public display and ridicule. And partly with you came, you became companions of them that were so used. For you had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Mm -hmm. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Might receive the promise of God. Mm -hmm. And in 30 through 36, the writer is changing his tone back to the encouraging words he used in verse 23 through 25. He no longer needs to scare them, the Jewish people, into compliance with God's law in the face of persecution. He already knows they can persevere yep. because they have been doing it already. They have undergone some of the same suffering that the apostles had gone through. Peter's wife was even martyred because of her faith. They were able to do this because they were looking forward to God's reward. Mm -hmm. While it is a fearful thing to stand before God's judgment, if you do not obey him, it is a blessed thing if you do obey him. Judgment day for God's faithful followers who suffer with patient endurance will see the receipt of all God has promised. And he has many promises for us, but one main promise. Amen. And that is the promise of eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. Okay. So looking forward through suffering, Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So let us continue in faith despite the troubles, the challenges, the obstacles, the opposition that we have in life. And let's be faithful unto death 
and we will, will receive a crown of life. That is our hope because that is God's promise. Amen. So faith is effective when we depend on God and rest in what Christ has done on the cross. The writer of Hebrews urged believers to recognize the superiority of our faith and live in obedience to God each and every day. Through Christ, we have an eternal reward and significant privileges that we can experience through our new life in Christ. Through Christ, we can experience God's presence and develop a relationship with him. We can grow in faith and experience a deeper relationship with God when we trust and believe without doubts and concerns that the world presents. The world is temporary, but our life with God is eternal. Each day we must trust God and hold on to our faith and then share our faith with others. When we share our love for God, we can encourage others and introduce them to a new life through Christ. Amen. Amen. So our... Um, Activation for application. Mm -hmm. Application. Application for activation. So this is just something to remind us of in conclusion here. The world focuses on tangible rewards, promotions, and recognition with financial bonuses. The world encourages the pursuit of tangible endeavors and earthly wealth with retirement plans focused on life in the world. As believers, we have a purpose that is not focused on earthly rewards because we have accepted Christ by faith and we are friends of Christ with a purpose to share our love for Christ through faith. Consider local ministries that allow you to share your faith in God. Volunteer your time to share your love for God with people who you don't know, who, who do not know him. Or share your faith and encourage believers who are homebound or sick Help others to remain faithful and experience the presence of God each day. Make a daily affirmation to share your faith. Finally, ask God for boldness to share your faith with others. God will give you the opportunity and bless your desire to be faithful. Yes, he will. And Jesus desires to show up, and his desire is to show up through us. Amen. Amen. Well, that is our lesson today. We hope um, that... There was something said here today that um, we all will be able to apply to our daily lives. And it's just a reminder, just a reminder for us. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for your time. Thank you for um, tuning in with us this morning. And we um, look forward to our worship service this morning at 930. Amen. And everything that uh, took place here with the, the writer of Hebrews talking to this audience took place. 60 to 100 years, you know, after Christ's death. Uh, so they suffered a lot of things. We suffer things. Uh, but through this lesson, we can take God at his word, and that should help us to remain steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord, which is our reasonable service. Amen. So we thank you for tuning in, and we pray that you'll have a blessed week and a blessed rest of the day. So God bless you. Amen. Thank you. St. Andrew P.B. Church, where Elder Buford Moore III is pastor, is located at 1393 Swancott Road, Madison, Alabama, 35756.